Welcome to another episode of 5 Games 5 Minutes from econelectron.co.uk. Star Wars is the official Electron conversion of the Star Wars arcade game, itself based on the famous movie. There are three sequences, all of which handle in a similar fashion. First is the dogfight, in which you need to track 3D TIE fighters and shoot them. When you score a hit on them, they split into three pieces. Second is the laser towers, which is very confusing. Shooting everything that moves is a good strategy here, but what you're shooting at, or why, the game is keeping to itself. Third is the trench, in which you duck and dive over and under catwalks, blasting more TIE fighters and fireballs. At the end you'll find an exhaust port, which you shoot to destroy the Death Star. Then you start all over again. Frankly, it's all pretty naff. The arcade machine is amazing, and back in the day people would queue for hours to play it. But the Electron conversion is at best half decent. Control is jerky, positioning your crosshair is difficult, the gameplay is boring, and the graphics are blocky and uninviting. I'd say it was for die-hard fans of the movie only. Ransack is a tale of the revenge of a second-hand and somewhat battered artificial life form. Peter Scott's first arcade shooter mode is one of those clever games that gives the illusion that it's sideways scrolling. Your droid combines bouncing, shooting, and skillful manoeuvring, and he comes complete with an energy level and an inexhaustible supply of ammunition. Shooter mode of this quality and caliber are few and far between on the electron. There's initially a lot for the ransack virgin to deal with. The aliens may be killed with a single shot, for example, but you have to get used to the bouncing motion of your droid to be able to accurately pick them off. If you miss, then you need to try to bounce over them instead. There are lots of weapons to collect, including four directional blasters, random bombs, multiple pulse lasers, and quote, one shot kills all, unquote, style bullets. You need to keep your eyes on the scrolling ground too, as there are spikes and electrified sections that need to be avoided at all costs. All the elements of this game are amazing, and this game is a must play. Predator is a scrolling level game. It's actually an official movie tie-in to the film of the same name, and you take on the role of the film's Arnold Schwarzenegger character. You're part of an ill-fated team exploring a rather dangerous jungle. The movement control is a bit different than you might expect. You can run left and right, and also left and right diagonally. This ability helps you come at the different baddies in the game from an angle whereby you can actually shoot them, so it's definitely useful. Soldiers emerge from hidey holes, bushes and windows, take a few shots at you, and then disappear again. You also need to avoid the mysterious creature who identifies your position on the screen by your heat signature. So whenever you sense he's watching, try and position yourself next to a dead colleague to outwit him. The skill of the game is to try to memorise the levels so you can run from screen left all the way through to the screen right without losing too much energy. A bit more variety with the levels would have been nice, but Predator is fairly playable and user friendly. Just out of interest, note that apart from Star Wars, Predator is the only movie tying game released on the Electron. Crazy Urban is a fast, colourful and quite frantic arcade game in what is called the Cubic Domain. The characters, including the pink blob you control, are all designed quite brilliantly and make full use of the Electron 7 colour palette. Few games are actually so simple as to be able to do this. The idea is that you bounce around a pyramid, or whatever construction each level of the game throws at you. You move diagonally in one of four directions. As you land on a block, you change its colour. Also bouncing around is a demon snake and a demon gorilla. These demons move just like Herbert and have to be avoided. There are also balls which fall down the pyramid and are slightly easier to avoid. It's not particularly difficult to play and there are some lovely other inclusions too. Transporter discs, for example, which hang in the air next to certain blocks and which move you back to the start position. I say these are lovely because if you are being hotly pursued by the gorilla and you leap onto one of them, the gorilla usually follows you and, whilst you transport, he falls to his doom. Look out for the rotor hats too, that allow you to reach otherwise inaccessible places. The game has a real cartoon feel to it, and it's the best clone of Cuba that exists for the Electron. Quack is a character who has certainly stood the test of time. This game has been reimagined on everything from the BBC and Electron, through the Amiga, and now the iPod. The BBC Micro and Electron version is his first incarnation. You play a little duck who must collect all the keys on each of 24 screens. What sets Quack apart from its contemporaries is that there is a very curious mechanism employed to defeat the roaming and flying nasties. These pervade each screen. They can't be killed, but if you manage to hit them with a bubble, they will temporarily disappear. 
The trouble is that when they reappear, they move at double speed and they're immune from further bubbles. This means you often have to double think over whether to zap them or just try and avoid them. The game is incredibly smooth and reactive to controls. On top of this, it makes fantastic use of the electron's colours. As screens progress, the game adds floating bubbles which Quack must bounce on, and the potion bottles have a variety of effects depending on how much fruit remains on the screen when you collect them. All in all, this is very classy stuff.